I just thought, man, it would be so cool to have here in your bedroom as a duet, like me singing about like being with this girl. And then the girl sings her perspective of what it's like for her. And I, you know, I, I brought up the idea to Avril and she just immediately jumped on it. She's just like, hell yeah, let's get it. Yeah, I mean, this is a deluxe record where like, I think it's a, a very straightforward, um, actually, I mean, not so much with the features, but I mean, with these with these extra originals, we, we had them written kind of when we were writing Never Look Back. And I mean, like Searchlight is like, just it's bad religion. It's just like, I mean, I, I when I was working at the shoe store back in the 90s, I would literally stack, there was a CD, there was like a CD um, player that would be able to put like eight CDs. And if you don't know what a fucking CD is, you can fuck off. Um, uh, but, but I would play like eight bad religion records back to back and no one in the store could tell the difference that they all thought it was one album. It would be like three hours of bad religion. And I'd be like, yes. And uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, top five favorite bands of all time. So Searchlight, the end of that song, I just did like a tip of the hat harmony, like three part harmony, bad religion thing at the end. And uh, um, I mean, Perfect is one of those, I don't know, it's just like a, a, a pop punk song. And, and it's like, it's in my bones, dude. Pop punk is like, I mean, for me, Descendants, Buzzcocks were the two original pop punk bands and, and, and Perfect is like kind of a hybrid of that. 3 a.m. is, um, I mean, I was so, I, I, I came up with the concept when, when we were making Nine, the Blink album Nine. And uh, so it's def it definitely has some isms of that, you know, but I turned it into a Goldfinger song for sure. And it's just one of those like lyrically where you're just, you know, scrolling at 3 a.m. and, you know, you just can't stop. And how many miles have I scrolled on Instagram? It's like one of those kind of songs where it's just like for, built for the insomniac. And uh, um, I don't know. I mean, I think these songs were uh, always meant to come out. I just didn't put them on Never Look Back because I didn't want to have a two hour, two hour album. I mean, I don't want to speak for him, but I, but I do want to, you know, I, I feel like, and him and I have never really spoke about this directly because we, like when, when he was in the studio last night and I mean, he's one of my best friends and he came in, you know, uh, I, I, I think the Aquabats was sort of, you know, his, you know, cutting his teeth with that band. And when the Aquabats toured with Goldfinger back in the day, he would ride on our bus and we just became homies back in the 90s, you know, when we were touring back then. And and I think for Travis, uh, you know, I feel like he, you know, it, it's just part of his DNA, like his whole, uh, you, you know, coming up in the ska punk scene. I mean, he used to come to the, to the, the barn in Riverside where he grew up and we'd play shows there. And he'd, he'd crowd surf during the Goldfinger set in his Aquabats outfit, handing out flyers for the Aquabats. It was like, I mean, there's just like part of the culture of when you're, you know, I was probably 25 at the time, you know, and I, I mean, you know, I thought I was grown up, but I was a kid. And it's like, you know, that that whole movement, um, I don't know, I feel like Travis was such a big part of and I'm, I'm so honored to have him. He played on all of Never Look, Never Look Back. He played on all of The Knife and he played on all of these uh, deluxe songs as well. So um, I don't know. I'm stoked. I mean, this is the fucking best drummer ever. So why not? I was just thinking about making stomping ground in, in the early 2000s. You know, we, we had we had a covers album that I recorded 99 Red Balloons for. And the song came out so good that we decided to put it on our full length album instead of the covers record. And the same thing with these these re-records like we had recorded them and they came out so good. I just wanted to do something really special. And so at the time, I didn't really know who the features were going to be. I kind of just held on to them. And to be honest, I didn't even know if we were going to have features. I just thought we were going to do re-records. And then I made the Avril record and I had it. And I was starting to mix it for this uh, deluxe. And she just, you know, I just thought, man, it would be so cool to have here in your bedroom as a duet. Like me singing about like being with this girl you know, in her just, you know, in her apartment, like, and just everything is just going swimmingly. And then the girl sings her perspective of what it's like for her. And I, you know, I, I brought up the idea to Avril and she just immediately jumped on it. She's just like, hell yeah, let's get it. You know? And it's funny. Cause when we were making the Avril record, she told me 
I think she was dating Derek from Sum 41 at the time. And uh, she said her first stage dive ever was at a Goldfinger show when she was 15. So it's like, you know, right when she was starting to take off, you know, she came to one of our shows and it's just, it came full circle. And now she's singing on a Goldfinger song. And I just love how it came out. I just love that band. Fucking love that band. I mean, they played... uh, they played LA last time they played LA. I went and I saw them and I just got to hang out with the guys and they're just the sweetest men. And I mean, I mean, I don't know, top five favorite bands of all live bands of all time. So, I mean, it was just one of those things where I'm like, you know, cause when I was working with Simon back when we were writing animal and stuff, um, you know, he actually asked me, he said, Hey, on spokesman in the bridge of spokesman, when you go dead, is that like a tip of the hat to rush? And I said, yeah, I mean, no one has ever asked me that before for for a musician to dive that deep into like, a, you know, con, you know, kind of a deep cut. It's I mean, it's not like spokesman isn't like one of the one of the big ones for us. You know, I knew that he I knew he had listened to my band, which was like the biggest compliment ever for someone to like actually have that much do that much research. And um, and I knew we were going to be, you know good friends and we've stayed good friends. And so for me, it was just a no brainer for, for me to get signed. I mean, I, to ask him at least, I didn't know if he was going to do it. He immediately emailed me back and he's like, hell yeah, let's get on this thing. So I sent it to him. I actually gave him a list of a bunch of songs. I'm like, do whatever you want. And he picked Superman. So that was it. 